Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hiral Dajia. We have with us Mr. Ashish Maheshwari, Chairman and Managing Director at Balaxi Pharmaceuticals joining in. Welcome to the show, Ashish, and a pleasure uh, to yeah. speak to you as well. Uh, Ashish, you. my first question coming to you is solid growth that we've seen in terms of the first quarter of FY23 with a revenue growth of around 42%, a profit growth of around 32%. Uh, what is it that has contributed to this growth in the quarter? See, the revenue growth in this quarter has come from the consolidation of our Angola business into a wholly owned subsidiary of Balaxi Pharmaceuticals Limited. Now, Last quarter, this was not a wholly owned subsidiary. We held only a 49% stake in that Angola company, which handles the distribution on the ground. In Q4 of last year, we consolidated by buying in the balance 51%. It's a wholly owned subsidiary. So now the revenue from that company is also <laughs> added to the consolidated results of Balaxi Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. That is why you see the growth in revenue, one. And two, that is why you see the growth in profits also, because the profits coming in from there have also added on. Apart from that, there has been a extra a, a, a big gain in exchange rate because of the dollar uh, rupee depreciation and the local Kwanzaa, local currency in Angola has appreciated. So we have made exchange rate gains at both the places, both in Angola. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, we have grown phenomenally our sales of by around 40% in Central America, which is the most important wow. factor actually. Latin America is where our entire focus is of the company right now. It is going to be there for the next three years. We will see hyper growth in those markets. And as we have always been telling that we'll see big growth, we did a 40% growth overall in last year in those markets. <laughs> and this quarter, again, we have clocked 40% growth over the last quarter. And the EBITDA margins there are very good. And that is why this entire profits have gone up and the revenue has gone up. Right. <laughs> So, so between domestic as well as exports, what's the revenue contribution looking like right now? No, we don't do any domestic sales. Okay. We, we only uh, do international sales and it's not just exports. We export, we buy from India, we buy from China, we buy from Portugal, and then we have our own wholly owned subsidiaries in Latin American, four Latin American countries and one country in Africa where we have our own godowns and we have a, what is called a stock and sell model. We ship our goods into our own godowns there and from there we distribute it to various wholesalers under our own brand. Everything is under our own brands. Mm -hmm. Right. And in terms of international business as well, uh, what's the geographical contribution to overall revenues? Uh, because we are very, very old and established in Africa, 65% of our revenue comes from Africa and 35% comes from Latin America right now. But going forward, uh, as Africa is now a saturated market for us, sort of, we'll see single digit growth there. But in Latin America, we are expecting 40% growth. So going forward, within two years, we feel that 35% will be uh, Africa and 65% will be Latin America. And what's the kind of time frame that we are looking at to get to this kind of a number? We are looking at the financial year 24-25. Okay, so by 24-25, we will see a reverse in terms of revenue contribution between Africa as well as Latin America. Because the entire is from Latin America. Right. And right. And overall, if you see, uh, in terms of the business strategy, what does that look like? And and what is our core business into? I know we are into, you know, it's it's basically IPR-based pharmaceutical company, but what are the byproducts that we're dealing with? No, we are basically a IPR-based pharma company. We call product registrations in various countries. These product registrations, we hold multiple registrations in Latin American countries, like in Africa and Angola, we hold more than 200 registrations, product registrations. In Latin America, in four countries, we're in the range of 75 to 150 registrations in each country. So our basic model is, that's why we call ourselves an intellectual property-based company. This entire registration process is what is our key. And then the on-ground infrastructure that we have in terms of stocking and distributing from there, that adds on to our uh, you know, margins from right from exporting to importing to distributing to wholesale. 
Okay, okay. And overall, interestingly, if we see in terms of the margin profile as well, uh, gross margin level, we've seen a massive improvement. However, at the EBITDA level, we've seen a degrowth. Uh, any particular reason for that? Yeah, again, it's because of the consolidation from Angola. And I told you 65% of our mm. sales come from uh, Africa, Angola. So when you see the gross profit margins, it goes up because in the consolidated results, we have not only added the sales of the Angola entity, but also the expenses of the Angola entity. So if you look very carefully, the expenses have also gone up massively because all the Angola expenses have come in. That's why you see a big growth in the EBITDA, in the gross margin, but I'd not call it degrowth, probably a 1% degrowth in the net profit margin. Okay. And, and overall from here on, in terms of the growth strategy as well, what's the kind of milestone we are looking to achieve, say, in the next 12 to 18 months? The next 12 to 18 months, as I told you, our main focus for growth and where we see hyper growth happening is Latin America. We are well established in a country called Dominican Republic in the Caribbean. Hmm. Halfway established in another country called Guatemala. And there are two other countries where we have just recently started operations last month. So next 18 months, we are going to see very good growth in terms of revenues, in terms of obtaining more product registrations, uh, in, Latin mm. America, in terms of launching more branded products in Latin America. Okay. And, and there is no uh, opportunity that you see in terms of where the domestic markets go? Uh, basically, our company, we have never sold in domestic markets. We have all mm. the, let's say, group started its business in 2003 with Africa. And we have always concentrated on uh, what we call frontier markets, which have some barriers to entry in various parts of the world. We have never sold domestically. Right. But any reason for that? Is there, it's not a lucrative market or what would it be? Uh, personally, I find it to be a much more competitive market than the frontier markets mm -hmm. that I'm And a more, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, I find it very highly competitive. And I think to make our space what we have been able to make in Latin America, America and Africa, I, uh, I've always looked at those markets. I find it easier because they are mm -hmm. they're more challenging markets for competition to enter. So I like, I like markets where there's less competition. Right. And then overall on the manufacturing front as well, what is our current capacity and what's the current capacity utilization? We, right now, we don't have any manufacturing facilities. We outsource our complete uh, uh, requirement of goods. But now we are setting up a UG hmm. plant, uh, which we have already acquired the land and it will be an OSD and liquid injectables plant. And we'll break ground sometime next month. And we expect to complete the construction of the plant and start production in 18 months. That is sometime right. in March. So this is, this is in the uh, Pharma SEZ, which is located in uh, Gut Cherla in Hyderabad, right? Exactly, exactly. exactly. Right. Exactly. So next month is when we start and in the uh, 18 months from then is when we are looking at starting to pro produce. So I think FY25, 24 is when we will see it hitting revenues. FY25, by around March 20. Hmm. Before we expect to start production. So okay. 425 will see revenues in terms of increased margins and increased revenues from the plant. Right. right. And the plant will be working at full capacity at a full capacity of two ships because it's a backward integration thing for us. We already have the sales. Mm -hmm. And and how are we doing the capex for it? Is it through internal accruals or is it through a combination of internal accruals and debt or only debt? It will be a combination of internal accruals, some debt, and some equity, fresh equity. Right. And and any inorganic expansion plans that could be on the annual from an acquisition perspective? Not for the next three years, because we have a roadmap very clear in seven countries of Latin America, which are new markets for us. So we have a yeah. roadmap of growth in those markets on our own. After three years, probably yes. Okay. Not Okay. And my last question coming to you is in terms of on the product side. Now, I think branded versus generics. Generics is a major portion of us, which is 65%. So will that contribution continue to remain the same? Or do you think we will be increasing our portfolio on the branded side of it as well? We will be increasing. We have seen an increase of sales from of around 5%, 30% in the last, 35% uh, in the last financial year. 
over 30% in the previous financial year before that. Mm. Our endeavor is to reach around 45% plus in branded products in by two, by 24, uh, in March 2024. We are slowly increasing that. As we are understanding the market deeply, we are going getting into what can be branded and we are branding this. Mm, mm, mm. Right. So I think, I mean, overall, yes, it looks like an interesting growth story that we're seeing here as well, especially uh, from the markets uh, and again, emerging markets, developing markets that you're looking at. But thank you so much, Ashish, for joining us on the show. Always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, great insights about the company, about the business. Uh, congratulations once again. Good luck for the coming quarters and speak to you soon again. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.